everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. I'm so excited today to be here to give you another interview with a Hallmark actress. We're excited today to be talking with Alicia Rotaro. And Alicia, thanks so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah. So what we like to do with all of our guests is to ask them uh, to introduce yourself and to tell us what inspired you to become an actress. Sure. So I am Alicia Rotaru, and I was inspired to start performing on screen. Um, I think after I finished theater school and had the rush for it on stage and just saw how much more accessible it was in the city that I grew up. Um, it was something that I wanted to do, but I never thought I could do it as a career. So lo and behold, <laughs> 10 years later, <laughs> it's happening. Yeah. <laughs> Did you grow up uh, doing uh, theater or doing, uh, you know, acting as a kid and a teenager? I did in a really, you know, pragmatic schooling kind of way, as we all, I think, did throughout our lives. You know, you're in elementary school doing, you know, class plays for Christmas and the holidays and whatever. And then it trickled into, um, you know, high school. And then in high school, I think I started to develop more of a, a, a craving, if you may, for it, where I just really wanted to be part of like the senior theater plays and all that stuff. And then you know, university came around and it was like kind of an obvious thing that I was going to study psychology as like everybody does. <laughs> <laughs> like we all go in, it's like, what are you taking? Psych. Yeah. <laughs> like, right. like, okay. <laughs> Biology. Um, and then I decided to do theater as well. So I was actually aiming to do a double major. Uh-huh. Um, found out in third year statistics, I really, really hated statistics and oh, like yeah. where that was going. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and then I, so I just switched and then focused on theater, gratted with that. And then I think that's when it became a little bit more serious for sure. Cause you have to, you know, like when you're in studies like that, you're, living breathing eating sleeping whatever you're studying i think um was yeah. your family that was it was your family you know excited for you to go into <laughs> acting or were they nervous about it lol no so they had <laughs> always encouraged i mean like i was a competitive pianist from a very young age oh. up until 19 um i know it's like a weird secret but I don't really talk about it because it's like dead right now in my life. (laughs) But I was always on stage, right? And it was always at this weird competitive like level. Mm -hmm. Um, The arts were always prevalent in my home. Like my dad is an artist. My mom, you know, used to write. And like my sister is a beautiful and talented artist as well. So like it's, Mm -hmm. it's in our house. But for us to sustain a life in the arts, I don't think my parents, ever really saw that either Uh I mean they kept they come from eastern Europe right so like when Uh they immigrated to North America it was like you have to do the work that's gonna like pay off right yeah (laughs) you know it's a different mentality so I think for them it was a little off-putting and shocking when I decided to drop out of psych and focus my major to theater Uh and end university with a fine arts degree you know, they were just probably like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. you're wasting your life. Like, this will never happen. And then I still think now, like, they understand that it's, it's happening. But I don't think that they really understand. <laughs> like, like, they, how do I explain it? They cheer me on all the time. Like, my parents are, my whole family's dorky where they're like, ah, oh, you're in a magazine. Like, send me a copy. Or yeah. where can I get it? Or when's your show? Like, this Sunday, for example, right? They're going to be like, oh, my gosh, Hallmark. Um, so they get it, but I don't think they get it, you know? (laughs) Uh Yeah. Yeah. Well, and especially if they have, if they're artists themselves, they, that I think that you can be like, no, don't go. That's such a hard path. Don't go on that path. You know, kind of thing. Yes. Um. Yeah. (laughs) And I, and it is a hard path. I, I, maybe I just wasn't really, um, maybe it's my like nativity to it. Like I just, I, I know that it's hard. I just, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's, I'm not saying that it's easy when I'm about, to, what, what am I about to say, but I'm, it's, 
the hustle is like the hustle is real yeah but it's so I think I just don't allow myself to feel how hard it is and in, in certain moments because it's so fulfilling and fun that's great. you know what I mean like it's yeah. like don't get me wrong though like my husband and I this last two weeks he, he's been my like Tony Robbins life coach you know like text, <laughs> text is like keep going babe because like, you know? <laughs> it's yeah those moments there are moments where you know sometimes your mind gets the best of you but at the end of the day I think it really forces you to think about what you are doing wholeheartedly in ways that maybe other things wouldn't mm-hmm. You know, well, and yeah, and then we've talked to so many working actors uh, on this podcast, you know, that uh, I think that people sometimes forget that, that you can, even though it is difficult, like you can uh, have a satisfying career as a working actor that, you know, that gets, gets gigs and, 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 uh, you mm-hmm. know, may not uh, be, I don't know. I think maybe we think that, oh, you got to be in the Oscar race or you, know, you got to be this big name kind of a thing when there's lots yeah. of people who are, uh, who are doing great work uh, and uh, having successful careers. Uh, but I, uh, you know, doing the, you know, working actor. And so I think that's really cool. And uh, so you, you grew up in Canada. Yeah, I did. I was born and raised um in Vancouver and then I grew up in a town called Surrey for my entire youth and then I moved back to Vancouver um as I was starting university um so it was I mean yeah like it was a great city to grow up in I love the Pacific Northwest I mean you said mm-hmm. you're from Utah right I, yeah. don't, I haven't been there so I don't I don't know what the um, landscape and geography is like there but I mean, there's hills, trees, and a beach, and a mountain, like, where I, I grew up, you know, so it's, it's five minutes, like, you want to go on a hike, and then hit the beach, no problem. Um, well, that's, so yeah, that's why yeah. it's such a good place for Hallmark, because you can have all, it has all the seasons, it's got any, uh, any, you know, setting basically that you can fake, if you want to do Vancouver as New York, Vancouver as, <laughs> As LA, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Vancouver yeah. is San Francisco. Vancouver is Chicago. That one's popular. Yeah, <laughs> Vancouver is just a rainy city somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So awesome. It's, it's an interesting thing. I, I know I, I I've never been to Vancouver, but I feel like I know it well because of all these interviews that I've done and all these homework movies I've seen. So I think if I ever went up there, I would be like, Ooh, I, I recognize that. And I recognize that. And I recognize that. <laughs> oh From my gosh. It's true. Movies. It's true. <laughs> and you get desensitized, right? Because like when you live and breathe, like work on a film set in your own town and then you watch the project, uh-huh. you almost get desensitized where you're, you just ignore that it happened or you'll see like Hornby street in the background. You're yeah. Like, oh, that's like, <laughs> you know by my office or what you know what I mean? it's just oh that's what they were shooting there that day right. yeah that's funny it's so funny <laughs> yeah what's your favorite it, yeah did you shoot a lot of homework yeah. out there you're right like a lot yeah so what's your favorite thing about acting what is it do you love about it oh that's such a fully loaded question <laughs> it's so early it's so early in the morning for that no I'm just kidding um <clears throat> my favorite thing about acting I have so many. This is going to be a tough one, but I, I, and it's not to cop out, but I absolutely love the transformation process. Uh Like it's, I love, you know, especially you're doing like a piece where you're in a period, a period costume or you're transforming into a vampire or a monster, anything, or even hair extensions, you know what I mean? Like putting on scars or blood on your face. Like I just love, I love, that process because it's something that just always I've enjoyed doing and like my whole life is playing dress up in that weird way Mm -hmm. Halloween was always one of my favorite things um so when we're coming into the you know into the world of doing it professionally and I see roles out there that I have to really transform for Mm -hmm. um I just I don't know. I get so like I have goosebumps right now talking about it. I'm such a dork like that, but I, those are some of the biggest things that just really get me going. Yeah, because you know that it's going to enhance the story you're telling full yeah. on, and that there's that opportunity 
for you to really let go and dig deep into your system to have this as part of the storytelling tool to get that across to an audience. Yeah. So I, I would say that that would be one of my biggest things, you know, like just well, that process. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've only ever acted in, in high school plays and things, but I, I, I can, I remember even just those small things, like just that experience of being in someone else's shoes is this is really a satisfying one i think for sure and yeah, yeah especially if it's something totally different than what we we know you know if you're playing an elf or playing a you know whatever it might be like that's totally yeah, yeah, yeah. totally something different and that I, I can see how that would be very freeing but um so you're you're right it gives yeah. you that different perspective like when you're jumping literally into someone else's shoes yeah, you're just like it, it transforms everything about how you're delivering a line or your perspective of the world in general as it should, you know. So it yeah. it's it's really freeing and it's educational. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like if you're walking yeah. around with a limp, that's going to inform the story of how yeah. you do your stuff, like how you make coffee in the morning. So yeah, I love that. So love according that. to IMDb, your first role was on Psych. How did you get, <laughs> I'm sure it was a small role, but how did you get your, how did you get that first part? Good old fashioned auditioning. Um, <laughs> so I pretty much graduated university. I got scouted, signed up with my first agent at the time and started the audition process. Um, was pretty green. Didn't really know what the heck I was doing because the medium of theater to film is different. Mm -hmm. So a lot of, and, you know, me being me, I didn't really, you know, tell my agent, like, all the downfalls. But I was like, I, can't, I think I got this. You know, I'm going to the room, do the audition, and leave. Um, so, you know, that one was a very simple role. And kind of the trajectory of what happens is when you start out in the business and you have nothing, you go for the small role, right? Like, your sure. team sends you out. They'll be like, okay, let's test the waters with this one. Um and that was it. Like, I literally, I don't even really remember the audition so much. I, I think I just, it had no lines. <laughs> I think the character just walked around with a lantern, like kind of almost glorified extra stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I think she had to play ghost or something. And like, I think I literally just walked around the audition room, like holding a fake lantern object and like looking at stuff. Were were you ex I, excited though? Like, tell, <laughs> I'm in I'm in an episode of Psych, or or <laughs> it, well, well, because because I I didn't really know the show was like pretty new when I was doing it, right? Like okay, that show yeah. was just coming out, so I didn't know what it was. I didn't know the whole hype about it, really. You know, so for me, it was almost like I had those mixed energies of like, wow, this is the audition, and like, wow, this is the role. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, wow, this is... Because, I mean, I came from doing, like, Greek theater plays in university. Uh -huh. You know, like, two-hour-long leading role pieces. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, now I'm auditioning for this? Like, this is strange and, I guess, fun. But then it, it became fun, obviously. Like, you get the call. You booked it. You go to set. You get in costume. And I'm like, oh, yeah, this is cool. You know what I mean? And then yeah. that, that was that very first... Uh, booking experience that I can recall and then after that you know the show yeah it like kind of boomed and then things amazingly started taking off like after that role I ended up booking like guest star roles mm -hmm. so it was kind of awesome like yeah. I just I almost like jumped to this to this next level like mm -hmm. but I didn't really realize it at the time that's great you so know? Oh, yeah. My yeah. actual first love is animation. And so I oh, noticed yeah. that you have a number of voice, <laughs> voice credits. And yeah, so I was, yeah. <laughs> I was just curious about your process for coming up with a voice. And do you have like, I've seen, I know a lot of these voice actors will, will like record, <laughs> will, will record auditions in their closet or some kind of, you know, to create a, a good space for recording. Do you have anything like that? I mean, the best of the best. I mean, I have a walk-in closet. Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that is where all the magic happens at home. Yeah, so I mean, like, I 
and that's just because, you know, I'm a little bit of a gypsy nomad right now. My husband lives in Vancouver. We have an apartment there. I'm in LA right now. We have our apartment here. So I can't, I can't really afford to, um, at the moment, build my like, you know, man cave, woman cave, studio, garage. (laughs) There's no need. I mean, honestly, I think the the closet works great. (laughs) And it does. It really does. I I mean, I have a a, a great setups in both homes, but it's very, it it would be sick one day to like walk into my, like my garage studio. You know (laughs) what I mean? My like, cause with like, I have it in my mind of what I want it to look like. Um, and then I'm, but for now, this is doing everything that I need and more and it's pretty brilliant. So yeah, like when I walk in, I'll get an audition for something. Like I just, I recorded a project a couple of weeks ago, um, which you'll get to hear about soon. I just can't talk about it Ooh. yet. Um, and it was, you know, it's a very iconic character and mostly what's happening now that I'm noticing with animation particularly depending on the on the network that it's being allocated to or who it's coming from is they're just really wanting real sounding voices so kind of what we're doing right now Uh obviously with the animated energy you know like we're going to be talking like this and like doing our stuff so it just it really depends it's not it's I it's rare that I get to see and get to play auditions that are like Powerpuff Girl vibes Uh you know like like well, like it's like back in the day super high energy crazy voices it's rare that I get those um and when I do get those I get so pumped and that's yeah. you know you still have a lot of fun with that too but it makes your brain work in totally different angles and I mean when I did um She-Hulk like I was working on you know the Marvel superhero adventures I remember auditioning for that and I was like oh man like this would be so cool to book and she hulk like what what would she sound like Mm -hmm. in this world for this network but for this audience yeah and that in itself was like a brain fart like I was I wasn't stressing about it but I was like oh man like there's so many things I could do so I think I put down like you know more than the average takes (laughs) like I think I gave them four different versions of my she hulk because I just had so much fun. And I also, you're auditioning on an MP3. Yeah. It's different, you know, like you're not going in a room really anymore and getting bossed around by the director or the casting director all the time. Like it's very, um, it's very, what's the word I'm trying to put here? Um, yeah. It's, impersonal? Yeah. I see. In, in a, a few of the phases. Yeah, very. So you have to be very like, like out of the gates like ready to rock you know because that casting office or the director or producer are going to be listening to how many mp3s so what's going to break you from that from right. that like <laughs> slew of people <laughs> what's yeah. going to make you pop so it's always a stress stress factor on that level because you have to I like to always think about the other person it, it, I'm in their shoes you know if I'm casting this what yeah. would I want to hear that might be different so coming up with voices is like it's, you know, it's, it's fun. It's crazy. It's stressful. I always try and utilize my peers. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, Cause like you said, the word isolating, I actually use it a lot, but not in a negative sense, but it, right. even though it is kind of a weird negative word. Um, it's just nice to have other ears and eyes on your work. Mm-hmm. You know, not for, not for like, Oh my God, Paige, you're doing great. But for actual like mm-hmm. critique of like, no, this sucks. You're, you're dropping your voice here or like put some more energy here, you know? And I think yeah. that that is what I, you know, whoever's listening out here and you are voice acting and you're just doing it by yourself all the time. Maybe don't, you know, like get some ears on it mm-hmm. and it my way. I'll take a listen. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, like get, get a colleague working with you in a way. Mm-hmm. So it's, that's, yeah. Cause that's hard too. You know, like when you're, I mean, how many times have you been with your friends, you know, and you're coming up with silly, stupid voices out of nowhere? Like you're just yeah. literally it comes out of your face or you're talking to your husband or your girlfriend or whoever, your dog, and you have that stupid voice. Yeah. Like, oh, babe, oh, you know, and you're like, oh, oh where did gosh. that come from? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And that's, I think the joy of what we get to do as performers is riff off each other. But when you're in the booth alone, you only got you sometimes. And if you're kind of in like an imaginary brain fart lock mode and you're not really like 
able to break out of it, you could get stuck in a patterning where maybe you're just doing the same voice all the time. Right. You know, because yeah. you're not getting exposed to another energy force, you know, yeah. or like another creative thing. Yeah, I think it's the coolest thing with voice actors. They can like have conversations with themselves while yeah like with i i love it it's so cool i'm so envious of it because i'm a oh, terrible yeah. terrible uh, um, like mimic or creating accents or anything like i'm terrible at it but i i'm and maybe with practice i could but i don't know you can not, get better <laughs> but, but do you have uh, kids in your life that when they saw you they were like that's that's you know yeah I, you're i know that voice on my little pony or whatever kind of a thing is that ever exciting I mean, it's, it's, I used to teach acting in Vancouver for a few years, like nine years and yeah. uh, I'm like a few years, almost a decade. Uh-huh. Um, and I don't, I, those projects when they aired, I don't think that the kids, I don't think I was really teaching the little kids anymore, but I would, you know, I, I'd come get text messages from friends when I'd be back in town and they're like, Oh, my students saw you or like yeah. old kids that I used to coach, you know, the parents would chime in or text me or email me and be like, Oh, we listened to, your, to <laughs> yeah. you on my little pony or we saw your Marvel thing. And how cool is that? And it's like, it's been really fun to hear that, you know, people are, I guess, yeah. looking in and like seeing that it, or hearing that it's me or whatever. But it's also kind of the magic of VO in a way where I sometimes don't even recognize it's me. Like I'll do, yeah. you know, I'll do a commercial spot or something down here. And I'm like, you know, on the 405 driving to work. And then like my McDonald's spot will come on the radio. But then after it's over, I'm like, oh, that was me. Because <laughs> like, <laughs> I'll, I'll, for some reason in my muscle memory of my brain, I'll be like, oh yeah, I know these words. Why do I know this ad? Like, <laughs> oh yeah, I worked on it. <laughs> That's funny. So like yeah, that happen, and you know, like some people don't click in until later. Yeah, which is always cool too. Yeah. Do you like watching or or, uh, or listening to uh, to yourself, or is it awkward for you? I I always love it because it helps, not in like a vain way. <laughs> We're like, I love the sound of my voice but in a way where I listen technically because I have to, you know, like when you are auditioning and when you are working, you're going to get playback. Even when you're acting on screen, you're going in and doing, you know, ADR after sometimes Mm -hmm. you have, I think you have to be able to look at your work from a critical um, place. Also for me, I like to look at it where I'm like, how can I be better? And I do that so much in the sound booth every day i'm making micro adjustments in where my voice is sitting how my sound is coming out is there too much breath on my voice you know like i i I, i'm very sharp to get all those nuances out for what the director might need for this project or whatever because i think that that's what's going to make or break your longevity in whatever you're doing you have to be able to look at your work and then Mm -hmm. take notes and then adjust and then adjust and keep producing right yeah, <clears throat> but it's. I've always, I think, you know, coming from my musical background, like I mentioned earlier, I think I've always had an ear for stuff like that. Um, and when it's my own sound, I don't even let it. It, it's weird. Yeah, like sometimes I'm like, oh, that's what I sound like. Oh, that's weird. Like <laughs> sometimes I feel like I sound lower pitched, you know, or maybe I, I but here I sound higher. But you never know how they produce it at the end of the day. Like, right. um, you know, you don't know what they're, you know, what filters or whatever they're doing in post sound. But it is, it's something that I always laughed at. I, I will admit when people say like, I hate the sound of my voice. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to listen to myself on the answering machine. <laughs> I'm like, really? Why? Like, you should. Because like, what if you sound like a tool? <laughs> and, like, and you work in a super professional business, you know, like, what if you're like the pharmaceutical drug rep and your answering machine is like, hi, thanks for calling Sheila. Um, you know, like, you're gonna want to listen to that and maybe yeah. change your voice note. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, make it, make it. <laughs> I, I'm not so. the- greatest when it comes to self-critique i'll i'll be honest as far as the podcast goes because i like 
I I may have a I have a little bit of uh for like just a little prideful about it sometimes. It's hard for me to sometimes see the flaws, but you got to do it. You got to do it. <laughs> and cuz yeah, you're right. Cuz how else are you going to improve? I if I am not listening back to my interviews and trying to think, "Oh, maybe I could I can do this better or I can do this or I can, you know, work on my editing or I can work on my like I think that that I uh, just doing that is not negating the value of what you did like you just because you're you're trying to improve doesn't mean like what you did was garbage <laughs> no not at yeah. all and you know yeah. it gets it gets even more technical and more technical when you're doing nuanced work that involves sure. um maybe dialects yeah. you know like you want to be listening to the sound of your voice with like mm -hmm. a south african accent like Sure. You're going to want to hear that. You're yeah. going to want to hear what you sound like when you're doing, you know, your German dialect. Right. And, and you have to, I think people start need to start getting out of their heads in that sense and just make it, like you said, making it come up from this place of like, how can I make it better? Yeah. Without having your ego involved about it being like, oh, I sound like this. <laughs> it's like, so what? You actually, if you don't like the way you sound that, if you really think it's that, you know, detrimental to your well-being of like having a great life. <laughs> Go and take a voice class. Like, yeah, change it. yeah, yeah. You know, your body is a beautiful tool, and your voice is a little output of of how it's utilized. So you yeah. can modify it. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so you had a role on Arrow that was yeah extended. So that must have been a lot of fun to be a part of. It was really rad. I mean, that was. Um, I would say the biggest thing that I had worked on in my career up to that point, uh -huh. um, at, like coming out of Vancouver for sure. Um, and it was like a little blessing that we all didn't know what, what was happening because it was going, you know, kept going and it kept going. And every time you got the call to come back to set, it was like, sweet. Okay, cool. Um, and it was rad, like that, you know, that's going off of what we just talked about. That was an experience in itself where you're like, you have to be listening to yourself, <laughs> you know, because yeah. I'm putting on, I'm, you know, putting on working with tweaking this dialect that wasn't really established. Um, and you had to find it and make it work and make sure it was authentic, <laughs> yeah. you know, in like a very short amount of time. There was so much change going on on that set and yeah I, I was, mean it was cool like the stuff I got to do was phenomenal yeah was that fun working with like Stephen Amell and that whole team it seemed like a pretty fun cast I had a blast yeah I mean I would love to say that the whole Arrow team was phenomenal but I only really worked with Stephen <laughs> uh -huh. all my scenes were in the flashback world right so, right there, there wasn't a black canary there. There wasn't, you know, everybody right. else. Like it was, you know, Emily Bett was never on our set because she wasn't part of that world. Um, but I did, you know, you got to see some people at the cool. circus going back to trailers as they were shooting scenes. But working with him was awesome. Like Steven, I mean, from day one was really welcoming. And I always, you know, I talk about it like when you walk onto a set and it's not your show, you're kind of walking into somebody's house for the party, uh -huh. you know, and you really hope that the host, a.k.a. the leads, are awesome. Um, yeah. But it, it was cool. Good. Like, good. Yeah. Uh, so your first role for Hallmark was in Love on the Slopes. And yeah. uh, so that looked like a pretty fun little movie. Uh, and... I just have to ask, is Thomas Bodane as attractive in real life as he is on television? Well, I wish I could tell you because I never met him. I oh, never no. worked with him. But my friend Katrina Bowden, we uh -huh. actually became friends after working on that movie. Oh, really? Um, <laughs> sure did. It was awesome. She, yeah, she was like, he's such a lovely guy. And the writer of the project, her, and she's like, he's lovely. So it, I mean... I think yeah. you can, I think I, I'm going to say yes. Like, I'm going to just go on a whim and be like, yes. Because he seems like a lovely dude. You know, but, like, you can yeah. kind of tell if someone yeah. 
you know, if they're, hopefully they're a good person. Yeah. But yeah, no, and I, I, like, I can't speak for Katrina, but I remember, you know, we were like texting and like, how's Whistler? How's the shoot? And she's like, oh my God, it's so great. Like she had a, <laughs> so, she had a blast. Were you, you were her like BFF then at the, at the office? Yeah. Okay. I can remember. Yeah. Yeah. It was hilarious. It was my first kind of, actually, I think that was my first Hallmark project. Uh-huh. Cool. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, cool, I'm a supporting. I'm a BFF. This yeah. Is great. Yeah. Well, yeah, and we had a lot of fun. Yeah, and so you guys became friends. That's cool. You and Katrina. Yeah. 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 Huh. It was Very pretty, good. It well, cuz yeah, I mean, she lives here. I was like, "Yo, I'm in LA." I was just like, "That's great." Um, very cool. So, we're supposed, hang, we're supposed to hang out soon, so hopefully. Oh, good. Well, all right. Well, this weekend we have uh the latest in daro and daro uh it's witness to murder a daro mystery i don't know why they changed the naming of it from a daro and daro for a burden of proof was what was originally gonna be the name uh but uh but anyway it doesn't matter <laughs> but it, 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 daro and daro series is definitely one of our favorites uh i love the whole cast with tom cavanaugh and uh, and Kimberly and William Paisley and, and we love Lila. She's been on our show. She's great. Uh, so Lila's that awesome. must have been Wendy Malik's, of course. Great. Like I, I know that like Lila was telling us, of course, this was last year that she had actually never met Tom Cavanaugh, which is really interesting because they all you know shoot on different days and stuff, and they yeah. never had a scene together. Uh, so I don't know who you got to work with on the movie everybody everyone nice i was so lucky i met yeah. everybody and had the best time like it, yeah it i i honestly would come home from that set and would just be like wow i am so like i get goosebumps now again bringing it up but i was just in awe of how phenomenal all three like tom kim wendy how amazing they all were yeah. And how, for lack of a better word, normal and approachable and like human and fun and just really strong performers, you know, like yeah. the amount of dialogue, like it blows my mind, you know, like what the human body and brain can do. But the amount of dialogue that like Kimberly, for example, would have to just regurgitate out and just own, you know, she's a yeah. lawyer. She's like going to court and then Tom too, like it. I mean, props to anyone who's playing a doctor or a lawyer or like, you know, yeah. something of that nature. Cause it is so intense and they are so much fun. Like we had a blast, yeah. you know, in the green room, in between scenes, just chatting, like, yeah, they, yeah, they were really rad. Their banter back and forth can be quite, there's a lot of dialogue there for sure. Oh it, yeah. <laughs> and yeah and it was just so cool because like I, it was one of the first times I was on a set in a, in a while where you know the leads of the project were I it was so cool to witness you know theater dork over here but having them just be like yo you want to run lines together uh -huh. like you know Wendy would be like helping Kim Kim would be like running stuff with Wendy Tom it's like let's run the scene let's make it awesome let's do the work and like nail the shot and I loved that. Like, mm -hmm. I love working like that, too. And it was just so inspiring, I guess, is the word I'm going to have to use, because it was just to mm -hmm. see that. You know what I mean? There wasn't like, oh, no, like, yeah, don't, don't talk to me. <laughs> right. It was very interactive. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I don't know. I just, I love the show. I love the heart of the show. I think it's funny. I think it's sweet. I, I, you know, I love, I've always been a big fan of legal dramas. I like that mm -hmm. better than the mystery shows personally, uh, because I don't know why I just like, I just prefer just personal taste. I just prefer legal dramas over mysteries. And uh, so that's why this one is definitely one of my, my favorites. Uh, it is my favorite of all that and Science Seal Delivered are my two favorites of the uh, uh, Hallmark Movies and Mysteries channel. Uh, but um <laughs> yeah those are my uh but yeah and i i love uh love lila i love uh all of the yeah the supporting cast is great 
and uh so can you tell us a, a little bit non with uh spoiler uh spoiler free can you tell us a little bit about what happens in the in the movie and uh yeah most definitely so i um i play cassie piper i come to them for help them meaning you know joanna and claire darrow uh-huh. darrow darrow and it's just discovered throughout the story of you know what is actually happening there is a murder Mm. um there there are some things to uncover there's a lot at stake for little cassie piper here Mm -hmm. um and there's you know really nice twists and turns and then alongside that there's a really beautiful plot line that i'm sure you already know between good old claire and Uh. mr tavanaugh kavanaugh's (laughs) <laughs> character yeah. so there's a lot of you know there's a lot of that starts to come up again in this, in this drink, movie drinking more uh grape yeah. soda again <laughs> the last one that yes. was their big, their big flirtation yes. was drinking grape exactly. soda uh, so, so say, the flirtation continues on yes, um more grape soda i'm very excited yes yes <laughs> and then yeah it's just so it's you know, I, I can't really say much beyond yeah. that, but there is, you know, there's obviously some nice twists and turns that the audience is going to enjoy. Um, and you're just going to have to find out what happens. Well, I mean, I'm yeah. very, very excited about it. And, yeah. Uh, that would be really fun to to see you there in that role um all right well we like to end our interviews with what we call the team b questions which is kind of silly fun questions that amber found in an old issue of team b so yeah <laughs> first question what is the best ice cream flavor Ooh, i would have to say right now i'm very much into an ice cream flavor here in la by jenny's it's called oh. the almond brittle you have jenny's in utah i've heard of it i've never had it but i've heard Girl, of it. get it yeah, get, it. <laughs> <laughs> get it it's gluten free it's amazing uh, that would be what i'm into right now uh-huh yeah cool mm. all right what is your favorite color green i love like all, all shades of green very on brand for hallmark christmas um, yeah that's good <laughs> okay what music are you into right now um oh that's actually funny that you asked that i, I put a post on instagram last night trying to get the the world involved to make a playlist uh-huh. so everything like i don't really have a specific uh genre that i'm vibing with actually my girlfriend commented on the new taylor swift album which i started listening to last night and it was pretty good yeah okay uh, yeah like i was i'm like taylor you're like <laughs> reviving yourself in a different way there's like there's actually a group that i started listening to i'm t- probably gonna butcher their name called shallow uh oh cool they're on yeah good. they're on my repeat i don't know very Check good <laughs> okay good <laughs> okay uh what is your go-to date night food Gluten-free pizza when I'm in Vancouver with my husband from a restaurant called Neekly. Mm -hmm. And then a really nice bottle of like the biodynamic red wine, maybe like a Sangiovese or like a Nebbiolo. Oh. And then some ice cream. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds good. Um, Okay. What is your go-to date night activity? Go out and do. Um, We... I mean, I love, I haven't done it in a while just because of timing, but I love going out and dancing, like having a really nice meal, going out and dancing somewhere. Or if that's not an option, probably just, you know, coming home, sitting with my man, having some wine, crushing a show, yeah, like Netflix and chill, not to be lame, but sometimes when you just had a week, you're just like, this is all we need. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Sure that sounds good okay dogs or cats dog okay beaches or mountains oh. <laughs> mountains okay uh would you rather be in a fancy dress dolled up or in sweats <laughs> <laughs> i'm like where's hiking gear <laughs> <laughs> um probably a fancy dress 
Oh, okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You already kind of answered this, but what is your favorite holiday to celebrate? Or I think maybe you did. I mean, I it's how ha- it's Halloween for sure, but I do do love Christmas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I love Christmas. So, if uh, Halloween's your favorite, what's your best Halloween costume? Like throughout the years, you think that I've done? Yeah, or, or something yeah. I want to do. I would, I will definitely hands down have to say, I don't know. I do not have a photo on me. I will find it and send it to you if I can. Okay. Years ago, years ago, when I used to live at home, I dressed up as my Oma and it was so good that people thought I was my Oma. Uh Like they thought I was like the old lady at the party. (laughs) Like it was amazing. Yeah. That's cool. I think. That would be hands down one of my best costumes. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Last year I was an angel, so that was pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty fun. And then the year before that, I was Chucky from Regrets. <laughs> oh man, also such a good show. Like going yeah. back to your animation drop earlier. Yeah, one of my favorite cartoons. Yeah, it's it's a lot better than people give give it credit for. That it's because they think oh it's just about babies it's it's better than that no but, yeah it's agreed. amazing yeah uh so all right last question this is a tough one and you can pick one of your own what is your favorite hallmark movie um, okay well i'm gonna plug my girlfriend cindy busby here right now because she is like a hallmark queen yeah she is and do you know her? We've interviewed her once on the podcast and she's so sweet. We love her. Yeah. Hey, I would have to say like just the wedding marches. Okay. Yeah. They're your <laughs> just because my, just because my girl's in it and like she kills it and I'm obsessed with her and yeah. all the, all the good, good ways. And yeah. also Chesapeake Shores because oh, yeah. so many of my friends are on that show. Like my girlfriend Jessica Sipos is on it and I just love watching my friends do their thing. Yeah. Oh I my think gosh. I think that's one of the biggest things. You are like your friends. Like if you have a birthday party, it must be like all the queens of Hallmark are there. If, if we can all find time to get together, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's very cool we have to tell them all about the podcast get them to come on but yeah cindy we love cindy and uh she uh, yeah she her that that wedding march the last one was definitely the best of the bunch uh sometimes and they can be a little little bonkers we thought the promise ring and in the fourth one was just like what (laughs) what's going on right this is a a grown-up these are two grown-ups like what but but the fifth one i i uh i really i actually really thought it was fun i enjoyed it much more than i expected to that's for sure uh but yeah it's Cindy. i love her her princess movie ran uh, royal hearts uh i haven't uh, seen it I yeah seen that you should check that i'm one gonna out. put on the list i mean she's so she's everywhere it's yeah. just so much so like for me to catch up on all yeah. her jams i'm true. just like woman i'm gonna need like a little bit of a month here <laughs> <laughs> that's true i feel like that i feel like her and i should just like ha- come together have some wine and like watch all of her projects <laughs> <laughs> be marathon and that would be good, that would be good. but you know what's so rad they did a busby marathon in her in um Hold on. Well, I'm, you have to check this out. If you go to her IG, they did a, a Busby marathon <laughs> in Calgary. Oh, really? That's so funny. Yes. Yeah. It was amazing. I'm like, oh, yeah. a Saturday movie marathon this Saturday. Like, <laughs> they're running the five fabulous films starting Saturday, September 7th featuring oh, really? Busby. That's funny. And the premiere of Royal Hearts. Yeah. Oh, Royal Hearts is really good. I like, and then Autumn Stables last year was really good, but that's that's cool. Well, you, I love it. You passed the test. You answered all the questions. <laughs> Woohoo! Team <Teen> beat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this was such a delight. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. And do you have a uh, social media or anything you'd like to share? I do. I mean, the best way to find me um, is going to be on Instagram. It's my gem. I love that platform right now. Okay, and it's great. my first and last name. So Adelisa Rotaru. And then I always um, 
love directing people to my YouTube. Subscribe, comment, follow, like, give me some ideas for some videos. Oh. And uh, yeah. What kind of videos Hopefully do you do? We'll see you. Um, I started a I started a little video uh, idea called Field Trip, and it's it came out of the whole thing of me doing Comic Con and traveling for work. Uh huh. So I thought it would be really cool to showcase why I'm in a city for work, um, hmm. and then in turn, you know, meet up with and hopefully collaborate with a videographer and a photographer in that city to help shout them out, you know, help them just grow their following and their portfolio while we shoot some awesome content of like, let's say a Comic-Con. Yeah. And then also like the city itself and be like, hey, so like, you know, I'm going to go at the end of the month, I'm going to Plattsburgh for a Comic-Con there. So the intent is to link up with a videographer and a photographer you know, shoot a little episode of Field Trip, show off Plattsburgh, show off the Comic-Con, put it up and there's, and make a little thank you. Because at the end of the day, like, I get to do Comic-Cons because it's everyone out there. You know, yeah. like, I get to do what I do because of all the people. So it, it's kind of maybe like a dorky, content-driven thing. But just to be like, thank you guys. Like, thanks for letting me into your city, sh- giving me this opportunity to meet you. But kind of turning the tables and putting you on camera for a minute if you want you know like so that's kind of where that comes from um or if it's not a comic con it's just for something else you know like in february i had to go to new york for a film premiere Uh um and i wanted to do a little field trip of you know time in new york yeah so that one's gonna come out soon and that's cool so what's the uh, channel again the name it's literally Alicia Rotaru. So you can just okay. find me on YouTube at like, um, what is, you know how YouTube works? It's like youtube.com yeah. slash sure. blah, blah, blah. So yeah, if you, I mean, if you go to my Instagram, you'll see the link for my channel in my bio. Good. And then it's up there. Yeah. So okay. it's just kind of a little concept I was thinking of so I can I love you know, it. say thanks. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, get, that's great. Get to know a city a little better. Okay, cool. Well, we'll have a link for that in the description section and for your Instagram. And we really appreciate you coming on the podcast. Uh, thanks so much. And we'll look forward to Darrow and Darrow coming up this weekend. Thank you. Enjoy. Let me know how you guys feel. We will. <laughs> okay. Bye. Ciao. Thank you. This podcast was brought to you by Hallmarkies for Hallmarkies. For more information about how you can leave your mark on Hallmarkies, visit hallmarkiespodcast.com, link in the description.